Supplements. Chapter 7. Dogen on, Being Time. Editor's Introduction. In these pages we have had frequent occasion to mention the great Dogen Zenji and his foremost work, the Shibogenzo. A treasury of the eye. That is, of the opened mind's eye. Of the true Dharma. Dot. Both the man and his writings deserve a book to themselves, and here we can only give a hint of their stature. Dogen Kajen. Also known as Dogen Eihei after his temple, the Eihei-ji, or Temple of Eternal Peace. Lived from to and was probably the most brilliant mind Japanese Buddhism has produced. Though Dogen is credited with bringing the teachings of the Soto sect from China to Japan. It seems clear that he never intended to establish a Soto sect as such, but rather to foster an integral Zen based on the highest teachings and practices of Shakyamuni Buddha. Actually he discouraged all sectarian classifications, whether of Soto, Rinzai, or Abaku, or the broader categories of Hinayana and Mahayana. It is misleading to describe Dogen, as some have done, as, a subtle dialectician, as though he were a philosopher rather than a Zen master. A high-minded teacher who deeply lived what he taught, Dogen sought to emancipate people from the fetters of greed, anger, and delusion by teaching them how to live a truly meaningful life based on the way of the Buddha, and not to formulate a system of speculative thought. The Shibogenzo, consisting of 95 sections, was written over a period of some 25 years and completed shortly before Dogen's death. In it Dogen deals with matters as simple and down-to-earth as the precise manner of performing toilet functions in monastery life, and as highly metaphysical as the relation of time and being to practice enlightenment. Dogen's whole mode of expression is unique and can undoubtedly be ascribed to the quality of his enlightenment. Believed by many to be one of the most penetrating in Japanese Buddhism, as well as to his naturally brilliant, highly creative mind. In informed Zen circles it is said that the abstruse sections of the Shibogenzo are the Mount Everest of Japanese Buddhism. And that one who would climb to that pinnacle must have the opened eye of full enlightenment and the climber's sureness of footing gained only with years of training. To give the reader some idea of the style and dimension of Dogen's Shibogenzo, we present here a brief extract from section E, being time, perhaps the most abstruse section of the book. We believe that this translated portion, which consists of approximately one-third of the section, is peculiarly relevant for students of Zen living in the science-oriented 21st century revealing as it does in a unique way the meaning of time and the universe. More than this, it makes clear that Dogen's insights as to time and being, realized by him introspectively in the 13th century through Zazen, and the views of certain contemporary micro- and macro-physicists on time and space, arrived at by them through the principles and methods of science, parallel each other to a remarkable degree. The difference, however, and a deeply significant one, is in the effect these insights had upon these individuals. Dogen's realization, being a self-discovery, liberated him from the basic anxieties of human existence, bringing him inner freedom and peace and deep moral certainty. But, as far as can be seen at this time, no such inner evolution has followed in the wake of these scientific discoveries. A word of caution. These passages ought not to be read as abstract metaphysic. Dogen is not speculating about the character of time and being, but is speaking out of his deepest experience of that reality. Always his overriding concern is with practice and enlightenment, with leading his readers to the realization of the truth of themselves and the universe. This is clearly stated in his Fukun Zazengi. Universal promotion of the principles of Zazen. Where he admonishes. 
You must cease concerning yourself with the dialects of Buddhism and instead learn how to look into your own mind in seclusion. Quote, Being time. An ancient Zen master said, Being time stands on the topmost peak and in the utmost depths of the sea. Being time is three heads and eight elbows. Being time is a height of 16 or 18 feet. Being time is a monk's staff. Being time is a hosu. Being time is a stone lantern. Being time is taro. Being time is jiro. Being time is earth. Being time is sky. Quote. Being time, means that time is being. Every existent thing is time. The 16-foot golden figure is time. As it is time it has the grandeur of time. You must learn that it is 12 hours of, knowness. Three heads and eight elbows is time. Since it is time it cannot but be identical with these 12 hours this very moment. Though we do not measure 12 hours as a long or a short time, still we arbitrarily call them 12 hours. The traces of the ebb and flow of time are so evident that we do not doubt them. Yet, though we do not doubt them, we ought not to conclude that we understand them. Human beings are changeable, at one time questioning what they do not understand and at another time no longer questioning the same thing so their former questionings do not always coincide with their present ones. The questioning alone, for its duration, is time. Human beings dispose themselves and construe this disposition as the world. You must recognize that everything, every being in this entire world, is time. No object obstructs another, just as no time obstructs another. Thus, the initial orientation of each different mind toward the truth exists within the same time. And for each mind, there is as well a moment of commencement in its orientation toward truth. It is no different with practice enlightenment. Man disposes himself and looks upon this disposition as the world. Dot. That a human being is time is undeniably like this. One has to accept that in this world, there are millions of objects and that each one is, respectively, the entire world. This is where the study of Buddhism commences. When one comes to realize this fact, one perceives that every object, every living thing is the whole, even though it itself does not realize it. As there is no other time than this, every being time is the whole of time. One blade of grass, every single object is time. Each point of time includes every being and every world. Just consider whether or not there are any conceivable beings or any conceivable worlds which are not included in this present time. If you are the ordinary person, unlearned in Buddhism, upon hearing the words Aru Toki you will doubtlessly understand that they mean, at one time, that is, that at one time being appeared as three heads and eight elbows. That at one time being was a height of sixteen or eighteen feet, or that at one time I waded through the river and at one time crossed the mountain. You may think that that mountain and that river are things of the past, that I have left them behind and am now living in this palatial building. They are as separate from me as heaven is from earth. However, the truth has another side. When I climbed the mountain and crossed the river, I was time. Dot. Time must needs be with me. I have always been. Time cannot leave me. When time is not regarded as a phenomenon which ebbs and flows, the time I climbed the mountain is the present moment of being time. When time is not thought of as coming and going, this moment is absolute time for me. At the time I climbed the mountain and crossed the river, did I not experience the time I am in this building? Three heads and eight elbows is yesterday's time. A height of 16 or 18 feet is today's. But, yesterday, or, today, means the time. When one goes straight into the mountains and sees 10,000 peaks, it has never passed.
Three heads and eight elbows is my being time. It seems to be of the past, but it is of the present. A height of 16 or 18 feet is my being time. It appears to be passing, but it is now. Thus the pine is time, as is the bamboo. Do not regard time as merely flying away. Do not think that flying away is its sole function. For time to fly away, there would have to be a separation between it and things. Dot. Because you imagine that time only passes, you do not learn the truth of being time. In a word, every being in the entire world is a separate time in one continuum. And since being is time, I am my being time. Time has the quality of passing, so to speak, from today to tomorrow, from today to yesterday, from yesterday to today, from today to today, from tomorrow to tomorrow. Because this passing is a characteristic of time, present time and past time do not overlap or impinge upon one another. But the master Saigon is time, Abaku is time, Kose is time, Sakito is time. Since you and I are time, practice enlightenment is time. Yu Shan Wei Yen, a Chinese master of the Tianj period. A baton with a mane, carried by Zen masters to brush away flies or mosquitoes. These names are used in the same sense as Tom, Dick, and Harry. That is, the 12-hour day, which could equally be the 24-hour day and night. The one Chinese compound can be read either as Aru Toki, meaning, at one time, or, in a deeper sense, as Uji, meaning, being time. Quote, the 10,000 peaks of the mountains should be understood symbolically as meaning the countless and varied circumstances and activities of daily living. What Dogen probably means here is that these ancient Chinese Zen masters, though having long passed on, still exist in the timelessness of time. Chapter 8. The Ten Ox Herding Pictures with Commentary and Verses. Among the various formulations of the levels of realization in Zen, none is more widely known than the Ox Herding Pictures, a sequence of ten illustrations annotated with comments in prose and verse. It is probably because of the sacred nature of the ox in ancient India that this animal came to be used to symbolize primordial nature or Buddha mind. The original drawings and the commentary that accompanies them are both attributed to Kuo in Shi Yuan, a Chinese Zen master of the 12th century, but he was not the first to illustrate the developing stages of Zen realization through pictures. Earlier versions of five and eight pictures exist in which the ox becomes progressively whiter, the last painting being a circle. This implied that the realization of oneness, that is, the effacement of every conception of self and other, was the ultimate goal of Zen. But Kuo in, feeling this to be incomplete, added two more pictures beyond the circle to make it clear that the Zen person of the highest spiritual development lives in the mundane world of form and diversity and mingles with the utmost freedom among ordinary people, inspiring them with his or her compassion and radiance to walk in the way of the Buddha. It is this version, presented here, that has gained the widest acceptance in Japan, and has proved itself over the years to be a source of instruction and unfailing inspiration to Zen students. Dot. Seeking the ox. The ox has never really gone astray, so why search for it? Having turned his back on his true nature, the man cannot see it. Because of his defilements he has lost sight of the ox. Suddenly he finds himself confronted by a maze of crisscrossing roads. Greed for worldly gain and dread of loss spring up like searing flames, ideas of right and wrong dart out like daggers. Desolate through forests and fearful in jungles, he is seeking an ox which he does not find. Up and down dark, nameless, wide-flowing rivers. 
In deep mountain thickets he treads many by paths. Bone tired, heart weary, he carries on his search for this something which he yet cannot find. At evening he hears cicadas chirping in the trees. Dot. Finding the tracks. Through the sutras and teachings he discerns the tracks of the ox. Opening square bracket. He has been informed that just as. Different shaped. Golden. Vessels are all basically of the same gold. So each and every thing is a manifestation of the self. But he is unable to distinguish good from evil, truth from falsity. He has not actually entered the gate, but he sees in a tentative way the tracks of the ox. Innumerable footprints has he seen in the forest and along the water's edge. Over yonder does he see the trampled grass. Even the deepest gorges of the topmost mountains.